So we've got Naughty Dog talking about their internal management, you know, all that kind of cool stuff, how their actual team is formed and all that. Uh, Neil Druckmann, who is the creative director of The Last of Us Part 2, has also been promoted to vice president of Naughty Dog. That is right, he is both creative director and vice president. What this means for Na- Last of Us 2 and any games going forward, we have no idea. If uh, Neil can do both of his job duties without any hassle. Or if this will put a strain on him, I don't know. They also announced that Anthony Newman and Kurt Margano are the joint game directors on The Last of Us Part 2, and that they've been around since Uncharted 2 in the design department. And Amelia Schatz and Richard Camby are the lead designers that round out their design uh, leadership team. So for all that, let me know what you guys think. What does Neil Druckmann's promotion mean for Naughty Dog as a whole? I want you guys to tell me. Welcome to the Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? Apparently, Kel Mitchell, and the hell, rate that impression. <laughs> Kel Mitchell has said on BuzzFeed, of all places, uh, that a Good Burger 2 is possible and could be in the works. His, his quote is, The conversations have started. There's something in the water. Everything's coming back. It would definitely be awesome. And there was a meeting. They're just working everything out contractually. So just keep your ears to the streets. So, he's basically being, you know, uh, uh, vague, but not too vague, you know, that we know. He's saying, yeah, we're definitely talking about it, but things still, you know, there's a lot of red tape to still clear up, but that it should be happening, and to just keep your hopes up. I like to, I don't, I don't know if there should be a sequel, but it's cool to see Kel get some work. I mean, dude's been gone for a while. Keaton's the one who took off between the two. Now, to quote a certain podcast about pro wrestling, this is just rumor and innuendo, but it's worth reporting. Uh, apparently, in January, uh, the Green Lantern Corps movie writer David Goyer had no idea when fans could expect an update on the movie. But according to That Hashtag Show, Warner Brothers is interested in the Mission Impossible Fall director Christopher McQuarrie to direct Green Lantern Corps. He's also directed other action movies like Jack Reacher and the other Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Um, if, hmm, I, does that mean that this movie's gonna be really action-oriented? I mean, obviously it's DC, of course it's gonna be action, but, you know, it's, it's space and cosmic action, not like just shooting and punching and blowing up. There's gonna be explosions, but on Earth, you know, in these other movies he's done, so. I don't know what he's gonna do with CGI, but then again, Mission Impossible, I guess, still uses CGI, so. I, again, it's another thing of, of... We'll see how the we'll see how well the glove fits when he when he's actually doing this if they actually get him to direct again. I would love again for all of these things. I would love. I'm going to keep repeating it. I, it's only like two more things after this, but yes, would want to know what you guys think out there. So this is very very interesting stuff for Dragon Ball fans. If you haven't already heard of this, the showrunners for Dragon Ball Super at Toei, Ryota Nakamura and Satoru Takami, uh, gave an interview about the Universe Survival arc, and it's very interesting. I'll tell you guys first what what they said, and then I'll get into my thoughts. These are all just bullet points. Thanks to Herms. Uh, if you don't already know about him, he's an A1 Super A class translator for Jap for Japanese. Um, here's what the bullet points he put up on his Twitter. Toriyama's initial proposal outlined the idea of 80 people fighting in a jungle and includes several character design images, plus a design for the tournament arena. Toriyama first drew designs for Jiren, Topo, and Dispo. Toriyama's original draft lacked any indication of Jiren's personality, so the anime staff planned on making him a talkative character. However, when they suggested this to Toriyama, he said that Jiren is a character who doesn't speak. So then they gave that talkative backstory to Topo. As a result, Topo inherited the anime staff's original plans for Jiren's personality, which is why he talks a lot about justice all the time, and Toriyama said that he gave them the backstory that Jiren's parents and martial arts master were killed. Topo being a candidate for God of Destruction was included in Toriyama's draft, which, if you guys remember, it actually was on... Toei's site pulled it down, but they actually didn't mention it on their site before the, the arc started that Topo was a God of Destruction candidate. The staff wondered how to handle Dispo's character and his cocky personality was only decided upon once Bin Shimada was cast in the role. Bin previously played Broly and Paptimus Shirako, Gundam Zeta. The rest of the Pride Troopers were thought up by the anime staff. Ribrian's fat transform form was designed by Toriyama, while the idea of having a cute girl transform into this fat character was added by the anime staff. So only Ribrian uh, is Toriyama. Brienne de Chateau before that is anime, uh, just Toei. Neither Khalifla nor Kale were in Toriyama's original draft. During a conference meeting, the subject of Broly's popularity came up, and so the anime staff created Kale. 
They made her a girl so she, she wouldn't be exactly the same as Broly. Once they showed Kale to Toriyama, he created Khalifla to go along with her because he likes, you know, he likes introducing characters in twos. And <laughs> so there you go. Kale nor Khalifla were Toriyama's idea. If you didn't like them, there you go. Toriyama didn't even, didn't even have that as an idea. And if you did like them, well, hey, cool. I, I don't know. <laughs> Toriyama's original draft included a document describing what happens to the Universe 7 Warriors in tournament from beginning to end. This included who Piccolo loses to and who, sur- for instance, and who survives to the end. This document included all the main points which is the battle between Universe 7 and Universe 11. Toriyama decided all 10 members of the Universe 7 team, including the surprise of Boo being replaced with Frieza. As the flow of the story was decided upon, Toriyama came up with the idea of Ultra Instinct, including its name and design, as a power-up for Goku that was different from Super Saiyan. Finally, Frieza donating his energy to Goku was not part of the Toriyama's draft. Neither was 18 and Ribian's fight over their ideals of love. Takami thinks that Toriyama might be trying to set up further stories with the ending of the Universe Survival arc. Keep watching until the very end of the last episode. Apparently there will be something special. And those are all Herms' uh, tr- uh, translations. What I think... I'm ca- I'm, I do... I always wanted a female Super Saiyan. But the way that was handled, that was definitely not... I think that's that's my I think that's exactly what my problem is. It ain't it wasn't that Khalifa and Kale I didn't want them at all. It's that how they were written with just it was just terrible. It wasn't they weren't written well. Like I feel like if if Toriyama actually did come up with them, they'd be not saying like like he he himself even says he's not the greatest writer, but he's a lot better than these Toei guys. I mean, a lot of times I see a lot of bad things. It's happened with the Goku Black arc as well. A lot of these ideas of how things are written. It's because it's due to Toei and them having too many cooks. They have, like, a different writer for every episode. There's a core group of them, and they keep switching them for every episode. So there's no consistency. The way they deal with their with the characterizations of, of, of certain characters is just off. So I do wish that... I, I know Toriyama is, like, just tired. I do wish that he'd have a little more in his manuscripts. So that way there's room to create Kali and Kale, characters like that, but also have them more defined. Like if they went back to Toriyama that he'd be like, Okay, I'm gonna give you a little I'm gonna give you even more backstory instead of just leaving it all to them and just saying, Oh, they're as powerful as Super Saiyan Blue. No, more powerful. Even though like a Patara fusion isn't supposed to it's very powerful, but it it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense to me. How about you guys? I still like Khalifa. I never liked Kale. Well, I didn't like... <sighs> I took five minutes for this. I knew it. I knew there was something I could talk too much. Um, oh, yeah, no, I have one more thing. Sorry. I was going to end it right here. But I have one more thing. All right, for my final piece of stuff, because it's not really... It's, it's half news. Super Smash Bros. was announced for the Nintendo Switch during Nintendo's uh, Nintendo Direct, which I streamed. Well, I didn't stream. Double RPG streamed, and I was live reacting with him, but it was his stream. And there's no concrete information from, at least to some people, that the game is new or if it's important. Now, if you see the picture I'm using for this section... Which, I don't blame you because this is more of a podcast. I don't blame you if you guys were doing something else. But if you came back to the video to see the picture, you'll see the picture I'm using where <laughs> Patrick and uh, the other dude's like, uh. So wait, this is a new game. Sakurai said it's a new game. And there's no Namco Bandai logo. So it's a new game, right, Patrick? It's a port. Um, I think it's a new game. That's basically all, all I'm trying to lead up to say. I think it's a new game. I think it is a Smash 5. They're not going to call it Smash 5, more likely, but I think it is a new game, not a port of the Switch. I That doesn't mean they're not going to reuse assets, but reuse assets don't necessarily mean port. I mean, Tekken and Soul Calibur reuse assets between the games, if you guys never noticed that. Doesn't necessarily mean that Tekken is a port of Soul Calibur. That's dumb. So, um, what do you guys think? Again, and with that said, check out my "Let Me Tell You" my first job video. Uh, I'll have the link there. You know, the little title card. You can just click on the video. You, you've seen them. You've seen those things. Video ends. And yeah, so click that and let me uh, show me support. I, you know, the better, the more support I get. Eventually, I can get better equipment that I can render these videos in. Oh, I don't know, HD. <laughs> Legit, I tried to render that Let Me Tell You video in HD and it, it couldn't do it. My, ma- my Mac is that old. It's almost 10 years old. I don't think... Yeah, it doesn't even have an HDMI port. It's it's that old. So, if you guys want to help me out, that's how you can do it. You don't have to send me money. If you don't have any money, then don't don't worry about that. Just share it out and click like. 
let YouTube's algorithm try and show the video to more people, and boom, that helps too. Alright guys, I'll see you guys next week with the new The Drop. Not so sure about you, let me tell you though. Hmm. And uh, my webcomic should be coming back too, so keep an eye on that too. Topos.io slash series slash New Courage. Or just go to Topos and search New Courage. And mixtape. Nimio Conrio, those are my words meaning mission complete, so that means I'll see you guys later.